Good morning. I've just turned on the stream. This is Carl Franklin. I'm going to be talking about starting keto here. And uh, of course, the first thing we do is just sort of wait for everything to work. Uh, we had some trouble with Facebook yesterday. So um, 12 minutes until Facebook goes live. Let's see who we get in the uh, in Periscope and in Twitch and in uh, on uh, YouTube Live. So it looks like, let's see, did Facebook work? Let's give it a few seconds here. And um, the live video should start soon, indicating that it hasn't started on Facebook. This is stuff I'm just learning about here, people. So let me, let me go, let me just say go live. Uh, okay. Interesting. So, uh, so it says Daisy is watching uh, on Facebook, but I don't see. Is it is it working, Daisy? I don't see that uh, that anything's happening. On Facebook Live. And I'm going to try, I'm trying to edit this, and it says unable to find camera. So this is kind of strange. <clears throat> let me try, let me try again. I, I just want to make sure that this is all happening. So if you're watching this after the fact, just go fast forward through all of this technical mumbo jumbo. I want to know if anybody can see me on Facebook Live. I know that um, YouTube and Periscope and Twitch are working. That's good. And it looks like the... I'm. Does anybody see the the Facebook live stream though? That's the question. Um, well, it says unable to connect. All right, so that that makes sense. So Facebook Live isn't working. I may have to close that Facebook. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try to restart the, the Facebook. I'm going to delete that post. I'm going to go back to Facebook now and do a live video. And I'm going to connect. And I'm going to share this in on a page that I manage, which is two keto dudes I'm going to say starting keto take two I'm sorry about this folks I will get this together for next time it worked the first time and it looks like I looks like I have to schedule it Why can't I go live? All right, I'm going to... No, I can't do that. Hmm. Well, that's the way I did it before. This is really bugging me, people. All right, how am I going to do this? Why is my go live button unchecked? Okay. 
very disappointing. Uh, oh, I'm not able to do Facebook. I'm sorry. I, I have to figure this out, but I can't do it today. Sorry about that. All right, we're going to I'm just going to get on with the content. So, uh this is all about starting keto and um uh man, it's just really disappointing Facebook. Sorry. So, if you're watching this, uh you you are probably either thinking about starting a ketogenic diet or you already have and you just want to be motivated or get some good tips or whatever. So the first thing that you should do, the first thing you should do is tell your doctor that you're going on a low carb diet and ask him or her to monitor your vital signs and adjust your medication accordingly if you're taking any. And yes, my phone is blowing up here. I'm going to turn it off. Um, so that's really important that your doctor knows that you're doing this. They may try to talk you out of it. Um, all you really have to do is say, uh, you know, show me the science and, um, you know, tell me one, give me one good reason, you know, give me the studies, give me the science. And, you know, if your doctor is just, if, if you think your doctor is just afraid uh, of the ketogenic diet, then you may want to consider getting another doctor because there's nothing to be afraid of. <clears throat> so just you say, look, uh, there, uh, tons of people do a low carb diet. If you monitor me and make sure, you know, if you're taking medications, that's a different story, right? If you're taking insulin, if you're taking any anything that affects your blood pressure, your, you know, uh, that kind of thing, you want to just make sure that your doctor you, you have like a, a come in after a few days, come in after a week, you know, but the but the very first thing you want to do after you have your doctor's permission is get a baseline blood test. And uh, yes, that's exactly right. Siobhan, get a baseline blood test, get lab work done. Make sure that you get your insulin uh, measured, your fasting insulin as well as a, a complete lipid profile, including a subfraction analysis. That means whether or not, uh, that means they're going to measure the size of your LDL particles, not just the number, okay? So that's really important. Of, of course, you want to get your A1C, which is HbA1c, which is your blood sugar. You should know that by now. But you want to just get a standard baseline so that you know where you're starting before you venture for, for further on this diet. <clears throat> now, the next thing you need to do is commit, all right? That means a month with more fat and no carbs. So you're on the edge, on the precipice of an amazing personal transformation. No drugs, no products. You're going to use real food, right? You don't need any of, all, any of that stuff. You're just going to take away the poison, and your body is going to transform. You are literally changing what happens inside your body in a big way. You're going to change over from burning glucose as your primary fuel source to burning fat. It's like changing uh, you know, a car to run on diesel rather than gas. It's like installing turbo uh, for your diesel, whatever. You, you know what I'm saying. You're, you're actually physically going to be changing. And so that means there's going to be some things that you need to expect, right? So by committing, I mean clean out your pantry, right? Get rid of the ice cream, clean out your freezer and the fridge, get rid of anything carby, give your Oreo cookies away, it, because basically if you half-ass it, you, you're going to—it's it's not going to work for you. Keto isn't going to work if you, if you half-ass it. So— uh, let's see. What, what, what's, 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 yeah. All right. Yes. I, yes. I will figure out the Facebook live thing. I, it's just something I have to test again. It worked the first time I did it. Doesn't work now. I don't know what's going on. So what does that mean? Do I have to cook? Well, eventually, yes. Yes. You have to cook. But here's the good news. If you're a fast food junkie, you can start with a few days of fast food keto style. 
And this is a really great way to get people interested and in, in into it because, you know, if, you, if you're already used to eating fast food, and be, that's probably because you don't like to cook, you don't have time, you're thinking, oh, this time commitment uh, of cooking, it's just this big headache, and you're probably going to want to over, you're probably going to overthink things, right? This is what people do on keto. They get, you know, uh, MyFitnessPal or some other um, tool to, to monitor exactly what they put in their body. And while I have no problem with that, I think that's great, especially just to know, to know how much protein is in a steak and to know how much fat is in, you know, a, a ribeye or whatever. It's good to know. But the, th the thing you want to... Uh, I'm not going to say avoid, but the trap that we all fall into is we think we have to outthink our body, right? When really the ketogenic diet is the most natural, ancient diet that a human being has ever been on. It's it's very simple. You replace all your uh, all starch and sugar with healthy fats. That's what a ketogenic diet is. And so... If you just do that and don't measure anything and you eat fat to satiety and you, you're probably not going to overeat protein because that it doesn't feel good when you do that, you're going to be fine, right? You, you may not know how much stuff is, you know, how much fat, how much protein is in what you're eating. Um, so it's good to know, right? That's why I say you might want to use a, 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 an app like MyFitnessPal. Um, another thing, if you don't already have a blood glucose and ketone meter, you don't need it, but it's good to know. It's especially if you want to test certain foods to see if they have an effect on you, right? Because that's that's what you know. Richard Morris and I are geeks. We we love telemetry and we love data, and and the more the merrier. So, yeah, get a blood ketone meter, the one that does glucose and ketones and get some sticks. Um, you Basically, to measure, um, to plot a glucose curve, you're going to wait a few hours after you wake up and don't eat anything. And by a few hours, two hours is probably okay. One hour, one hour and a half is probably okay. And the reason that you wait before your first measurement is because we have this thing called the dawn effect. All right, and that is every morning when you wake up, your pancreas squirts out a little, uh, I'm sorry, your liver squirts out a little glucose, and that sort of gives you a boost to, to wake you up. That's, that's essentially how you wake up. And so after you, you take your baseline blood glucose, then you eat it only what you're trying to measure, okay? If it's diet soda, just drink a can of diet soda. All right. Now, 15 minutes after you take another blood glucose, 30 minutes after, 60 minutes after, 90 minutes after, and you just write them down. And so that plots a curve. OK. And uh, Richard Morris has done a really good job of writing this out. If you go to his blog at easylowcarb.com. That's easy, L-O-C-A-R-B dot com. And search for glucose or glucose curve or plotting a glucose curve. Uh, it's You can find it. It's also in our booklet, which is called The Ketogenic Diet in a Nutshell. And it's free, a free PDF you can download from booklet dot two keto dot com. It's in there as well. All right. So you probably want those things. Where was I? Fast food. My favorite breakfast at McDonald's, excuse my coffee, is sausage McMuffins with egg. I get two of them. I haven't done this in a while, but when I was starting, it was like awesome. Just go to the drive through Two sausage McMuffins with egg. The reason I like them is because they're real eggs. Real eggs. Not, you know, they're not the eggs from a from a plastic jar or a plastic bag so here's a tip when you order scrambled eggs in a restaurant they probably came in a big plastic bag pre-scrambled yeah i know my wife used to work in a restaurant and 
that's if you want fresh eggs, you order them uh, country scrambled because that means they actually have to crack them and scramble them in the pan or on the grill. But these are real eggs. And ask for the cheese on the side of these sausage McMuffins because the cheese sticks to the muffin. I almost said McMuffin. The cheese <laughs> sticks to the muffin. And so you'd be peeling it off and it's kind of nasty. So what you do is you just get them, throw the muffins away, and use the sausage as the outside, as your what you're holding. Okay, put the cheese on the inside. Now you got two sausage patties, two eggs, and two slices of cheese in the middle, and just chow down. It's good. That's a great breakfast if you're uh, a fast food junkie. Now, if you want uh, burgers at McDonald's, Burger King, wherever, Hardee's, uh, what are some of the other ones? Carl's Jr. is really Hardee's, but most places will make you uh, burgers without the bun. But if you don't want to cause a scene, you know, you don't want to use a knife and fork, just ask for no ketchup because or, or, other, or other sauce, right? Special sauce, ketchup, those things are always shelf-stabilized with sugar and or high fructose corn syrup. Ask for mayo. Ask for mayonnaise, right? Now, if you want it in a box with a knife and fork, they'll usually do that for you. But but what you can do is just, you know, toss the bun and, and just eat it. Ask for extra napkins because it's going to get a little messy. Uh, don't get anything battered. So if you're going for a chicken patty, ask for a grilled chicken, not crispy chicken. And also choose the burger with the best meat, like quarter pounders rather than regular cheeseburgers. Those are made from the cheaper cuts. Okay. Uh, in other places in the world, kebabs, kebab plates are very popular, sort of lamb kebabs or pork or whatever. Uh, street food, you know, souvlaki, the Greek uh, chicken. These plates are really good as long as there's no fries or starch, potatoes, rice, that kind of thing. Um, at Taco Bell, sometimes I get a hankering for Taco Bell. And as you know, if you listen to the show, I ended up there at 3 o'clock in the morning and bought like three bags full of stuff. But anyway, it wasn't that much. Anyway, uh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Taco Bell, you can get uh, steak, soft tacos. I, I would stay away from the regular tacos because that meat isn't really meat. It's sorry, Taco Bell, but it's it's Taco Bell meat. And then that's in quotes. But if you can get steak soft tacos, it actually comes with a lime crema. And just, you know, just ask for a fork or a spoon and put all that stuff in a in a in a bowl or just in the paper and, and scoop it out. And that's really good stuff. So I guess what I'm saying is it doesn't have to be difficult. You know, if you are cooking from the start and you're going to cook, you can just do bacon and eggs in the morning right? Eat bacon and eggs, you know, fry the bacon, take it out, cook the eggs in the bacon fat, however you want to melt some cheese on there. And folks, that's going to keep you full all the way till afternoon, you know, two or three o'clock in the afternoon, you won't even think about eating. So two or three in the afternoon or whenever you get hungry, have something else like a, a burger, a, a poached hamburger. So buy the fattiest cut of hamburger you can find and poach it in, in butter. So take a, a stick of butter, put it in a little pan and melt it. Get some, you know, seasonings, whatever, Montreal steak seasoning, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, at least salt. Put that on there and over low heat, low heat, just slowly cook that burger. When you flip it over, you can put a slice of cheese or two on there. And uh, American cheese is okay for your transition period because, you know, we're all sort of, we all sort of have these, um, you know, habits of fast food or whatever that we like to hold on to. And American cheese isn't going to kill you right up front, but probably not a good long-term food to keep in your fridge. Um, but every once in a while I go for it just because I get that hankering for some, just just get good American cheese, if you're going to do it, like Kraft Singles, those, those are about the best you can 
that I can find anyway. But if you want a creamy substitute for American cheese, try Havarti. Go to the deli and ask for sliced Havarti. It's very creamy and it's, it's mild cheese. Or mozzarella is a good alternative. Or Monterey Jack. Those are good mild cheeses. Of course, you can get sliced cheddar as well or any sliced cheese. But get it from the deli, right? It, it, it's, it's just one step above uh, um, American cheese. But still, uh, you know, don't beat yourself up. Just have American cheese if that's what you want. Another thing, if you're if you're cooking and shopping, it, it's really easy and cost effective to slow cook a fatty meat in the oven. There, there's no substitute for it. I mean, it's just great. You know, uh, pork shoulder or pork butt is in my town. You know, like less than two dollars a pound. It's really really fatty, right? So get a three or four pound pork shoulder or pork butt. You don't need a gigantic one. You don't need the picnic one with the skin on it. You could do that if you want, but um, get some good olive oil, some fresh garlic, some ro- fresh rosemary, and a lemon. And you're gonna make, um, you're gonna make what do you? It's not really a sauce, but it's sort of like a wet rub, right? Okay. So you're gonna chop up a few sprigs of rosemary, crush four or five cloves of garlic with a garlic press, and take a half a cup at least of olive oil zest the lemon which get means get a zester or you can get just a grater or a rasp or a cheese grater will work to take off the rind of that lemon because that's where the oil is that's where the flavor of the lemon is you squeeze half the lemon into the mix uh, add a tablespoon at least of salt you're going to want a lot of salt to cover that thing and a few cracks of pepper you mix all that up and just coat the pork shoulder with it and you put it in a dutch oven or some other deep oven pan that has a lid where you can close it okay cook that at 200 degrees fahrenheit for about five hours and i know it sounds like a lot of work but really what did you do you just made some dressing covered the meat stuck it in the oven washed your hands and went away for five hours so do that first thing in the morning before you cook your bacon and eggs by afternoon time oh first of all your house is going to smell amazing (laughs) After about an hour, it's going to smell really good. And uh, when that thing comes out, it just falls apart. It, it's delicious. There's lots of fat. You won't need to, to, to put any butter on it. it it's going to be plenty fatty. Now, what do you do with the, the liquid in the pan? Well, there's water in there, of course, but there's also uh, you know, pork fat and all of that olive oil and the seasonings and all that. That's great stuff. So you can strain that into a saucepan and uh, reduce it a little bit. In other words, you know, cook it down. And here's a here's a tip that we learned from Chef Robert. If you're a foodie and you really want to do some French sauce here, you can do a beurre monté. Beurre is butter. Monté means lifted. Lifted butter. And all you do is you get a pan really hot and... Put about, I don't know, a tablespoon, two tablespoons of water in there. And then put butter, maybe half a stick of butter chopped up in little pieces, melt it, and keep whisking and whisking and whisking and whisking. What happens is it thickens, all right? It thickens. And as it emulsifies in that water, and it's lifted because it's lifted off the pan by the water. That's what lifted butter means. So you can use it as a thickener. Now what you do is once that thickens, it's probably going to take, I don't know, three minutes, something like that. Once that thickens up, you add that to the to the sauce that you strained from the drippings and whisk that up. And now you've got this thick, luscious gravy. I mean, this is stuff that you can't get in a French restaurant. And it's $2 a pound for pork butt. It's just amazing. So eventually, you're, you're going to want to start cooking. So here's how I psyched myself into doing this. You've, if you've listened to the show, you may have heard me say that, um, and Richard too, that we consider kitchen equipment, you know, kitchen gear, whether it's a Dutch oven or a slow cooker, a crock pot, uh, anything like that, you know, a, a, a sous vide stick, an Inova sous vide stick. We consider that medical equipment. 
all right? And when you spend time in the kitchen cooking and in the grocery store shopping, you're taking an active role in your health. You know, this is this is home health care, except that it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost to have a nurse come and give you pills. You're doing it yourself. But consider it home health care and consider the food that you buy and the gear that you use in the kitchen to be medical devices. What else? I mean, that's what you're doing. You're transforming yourself. Not, not only are you transforming yourself, and it, not only is this a diet for weight loss, it's a lifestyle change, right? So sooner or later, you need to get um, hip to uh, and get, get in the habit of shopping and, uh, and shopping correctly, too, uh, which means not buying a whole week's worth of food in one trip. You know, buy buy a day or two's worth of food in one trip, especially if you're going to do any uh, vegetables that aren't going to keep for for a while. So that's the, that's how I psych myself up to it. You really have to think about um, food as medicine because it is. And the absence of certain foods, carbohydrates and refined carbohydrates, especially uh, as as pe- poison. Right. You have to sort of remove that stuff from your diet. So given that, you're now going to spend, you know, probably at least an hour a day uh, shopping and cooking. So you want to minimize the, the amount of time it's going to take, yes, but, but relish it, right? It's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to take raw ingredients and cut them on a cutting board and, and transmogrify them into uh, real food that you can eat. One of the first things that people like to cook with keto is some kind of bread substitute. And, and here's the thing. You forget about fasting right now if you're starting out. Forget about intermittent fasting. Forget about one meal a day. That's noise to you. Right now, you want to eat when you're hungry and you want to stop eating when you're full. That's your job. Until you're fat adapted, that's your job. You may not lose any weight in the first month, but if you listen to the Getting Fat Adapted talk I did yesterday, you'll be fat adapted if you just follow these rules, all right? So, as I said, bread. Um, First of all, there are lots of breads that call themselves low-carb in the store. Eh, I did this, you know... I, I use these for a while and, you know, people like to flirt with low carb tortillas and all that stuff. The fact is they still have wheat um, and, you know, there's still some carbs and it's they're not the right kind of carbs that you want. So while I don't I'm not going to tell you not to use it, if you do go and experiment with these breads, do do the glucose curve, you know, test it to see if you can tolerate it or not. You might be able to, but most people I know, it just teases them and doesn't, it's not good. I, I, I eventually, I did it for a long time. I used these low carb breads and then I weaned myself off of them. So, you know, in the first month or so, if you think you need the crutch of low carb bread, okay, go for it. Now, if you really want a low carb bread, there is a bread out there that is a yeast risen bread but it doesn't have any wheat, so it's gluten-free. Uh, it's made with coconut flour and almond flour and psyllium husks and yeast. And you can get that at bread.2keto.com. That's actually a link that goes to Fox Hill Kitchens in Vermont. Um, Julie from Fox Hill Kitchens came down to Keto Fest last year, and she made grilled cheese sandwiches on these buns. And they, you know, they, when you, because they're yeasty, the, the, they rise. And, well, where's that sugar coming from? Well, there's some residual sugar in both coconut flour and almond flour. So the theory is that when you add yeast to these things, it, it, it rises. And, and it does. Just, just enough. So it poofs up. And when you cut it, you get that yeast smell, you know, that real bread has. They make uh, buns for burgers and sandwiches, and they also make bagels and croutons. And I think they make, um, I think they make uh, 
uh, breadsticks, yeah, like pretzel rod breadsticks. So bread.2keto.com. That's probably your best bet if you want, you know, uh, to buy bread. Of course, there's lots of recipes for keto bread. Diet Doctor has one. Um, um, a lot of people have them. Uh, keto Connect has a really good one. And you can, you can make them yourself. There's another kind of bread called cloud bread or oopsie bread. And it's called oopsie because it was discovered by accident, this recipe. And the recipe for uh, oopsie bread that we follow, you can just Google Bing it or whatever. Um, but if you want a list of these recipes and the stuff that I've been talking about so far... We've been compiling our recipes that we've shared on Two Keto Dudes for two years. And there's a huge list of them at recipes.twoketo.com. So another thing to do is to listen to podcasts, right? The Two Keto Dudes is just one of many podcasts that are out there. And the, the reason is, even if you know the stuff they're talking about, it, it really helps to, to drill into your brain the, you know, the kind of support, reinforcing the message that it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, right? It, it's fine. You're, you're not going to die. Uh, here's the science. You know, here are people that have done it. Um, you're out on social media. You can see that there are people, I lost 100 pounds. I lost uh, all this weight. Yeah, look at this. So this was me in January 2016 at 366 pounds. And then in December, so in one year, I had lost 80 pounds, and I've kept it off for two years. So that's, that's pretty remarkable. You see this over and over and over again. People are doing it, and it motivates you to see other people's progress. Um, so there's a couple of episodes, introductory episodes of Two Keto Dudes, number 48, Starting Keto, and 11, Newbies. And but if you're like most people, you binge listen from the beginning. So that's the the other thing is uh, Richard and I did a video series called "Fixing the Two Keto Dudes Fix Diabetes." And I say series; it was two. We wanted it to be three, but um, we never were able to go back for the third time. Here's here's what it is: If you go to fix. Two dot com, it's a blog post, and you'll see. Uh, links to two videos. What we did is we went to San Antonio to uh, a company down there, two companies that we did um, we did a presentation at. And we got we gathered data from these people, their their blood sugar. Basically, there was like 80 people in the audience that we took their blood sugar. And we anonymized the data and plotted it on a graph. And we found out that a good percentage of them were at risk for diabetes, and some were diabetic. Lots of them were pre-diabetic, and many of them were just under pre-diabetic, right? So we basically told them, we did a lecture and, and showed them the science, and uh, we, re, we redid that lecture in the studio so we have our PowerPoint slides, and then there's little Carl and Richard down down below. And that's at fix.2keto.com. Yeah, so starting keto, keto for absolute beginners, uh, newbies, these are all good. Uh, there's a lot of great podcasts out there. And again, I think it's just a good idea to keep them playing because that reinforces, you know, the the the, the th thoughts that go through your mind uh are powerful, right? It's kind of like planting seeds. When you when you plant seeds, they grow, and uh, you want to plant the right seeds. And, and it, really, all you're trying to do is unlearn, uh, unlearn stuff that you've been taught, that we've all been taught, that hasn't worked, and it's wrong. So, uh, and it's it's hard for us to get to that point to say, "Wow, that's all wrong." But uh, this is the realization we've all had. <clears throat> keto veggies. Yes, this is a great question. I love any vegetable that is coated with olive oil and salt and roasted in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or broiled. Like Brussels sprouts, like cauliflower, like broccoli, like green beans, like uh, any kind of cabbage. 
that is the way to eat your vegetables. I don't ever want to catch any of you steaming these things. No steaming. That All it does is fill it with water, and there's no flavor in water. You want to bring out the flavor. Yeah, If you're going to steam a vegetable, steam it with vegetable stock. Steam it with at least salt water, right? Chicken stock. Here's another great thing that we do. Um, you, and, and it's fairly cheap. You can go to the store, go to the grocery store, and get a rotisserie chicken. Now, rotisserie chickens are about five bucks where I come from, okay? So you pull all the meat off and save all the skin and bones. Pull the meat off, cut up some celery, you know, uh, mash the meat into bite-sized pieces, put it in a bowl, cut up three or four stalks of celery into little pieces. Um, if you want some a little bit of onion, you can do that. Onions are kind of notoriously high in sugar, so you want to just watch that. But you don't need that. Um, a little onion powder will give you the flavor of onions without it. And then some mayonnaise. Now, I know everybody's going to talk about mayonnaise having soybean oil and all that stuff. This is your transition period, all right? You can go for the other stuff later when you have uh, less uh, attachment to the foods that you've been eating all your life, all right? So chicken salad is what I'm talking about. Put some celery salt in there. That's really all you need. If you want to throw a little garlic powder, that's fine, a little onion powder, whatever. But it's chicken, celery, and mayo. And mix it up. And then just put it in the fridge. And... Another great thing to do is get some sliced cheese from the deli, like some smoked Gouda or something like that, and that comes in a round. So you take that, put a little chicken salad in it, wrap it up. Man, that's a great snack when you're hungry. Bacon is like the perfect keto food. Make a couple of pounds at a time because guess what? It goes fast. The best way to make bacon, I've found, is to get a cookie sheet. First of all, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, the oven. Get a cookie sheet. Put... Uh, parchment paper down on the cookie sheet and just lay out your bacon cook it 300 degrees and when it's done it's delicious and it's crispy 20 minutes 25 30 minutes excuse me something like that this isn't hard right uh, it's bacon you, you put it on a cookie sheet you put it in the oven uh, let's see some of our some of our other recipes include you know if you want to get fancy you can do the sous vide thing so anova is a company that makes this fairly cheap sous vide stick and sous vide means under vacuum excuse me the idea is that you get a um a food saver which is a vacuum sealer that you can get at bed bath and beyond or walmart even food saver right comes with a plastic roll and you basically take uh, any kind of any kind of food really great for fish Richard recently did salmon in the sous vide um, w another thing that I like to do and I serve this at keto fest the VIP party and I'm gonna do it again this year is chuck roast so chuck roast is about 399 sometimes 499 a pound and it's beef but it's what you usually use for stew it, it's kind of tough if you just cook it right but slow cooking it sous vide is wonderful so again it's garlic thyme salt olive oil pepper make put that all over it coat it really well and then put it in a vacuum bag and this sous vide stick basically is a stick I should go grab it, but I don't have time. I'll grab it tomorrow. It's a stick that you attach to the side of a pot of water. And you set the temperature, and it circulates the water and keeps the, the, the water at that temperature. And it's within a degree or two. It's great. So if you set it for medium rare, what's that, 135, something like that? Set it for medium rare and leave it in that pot for two days. You heard me. Two days, 48 hours. You may have to top off that water, but when that stuff comes out, it's like butter. And it's medium rare, edge to edge. You can take it right out of that and sear it, and you should, for safety reasons. Sear it, in other words, a very, very hot pan. Take it right out there, 
and sear it on every side for 30 seconds, 45 minute, that kind of thing. Now, uh, another thing people like to do, and James just said this, is make their own mayonnaise. So you can make mayonnaise with oil and egg whites and salt and a little pinch of uh, uh, mustard or apple cider vinegar or something like that. Um, the ball jelly jars, you know what those are? Those glass jars are perfect for this. You get a, a, a stand mixer, a hand mixer, you know, the one that a stick blender, I guess they're called. Get one that fits in, st- in exactly inside a jar. Put some avocado mayonnaise. I'm sorry. Put some avocado oil in there or some olive oil uh, or even bacon fat. Charles from the New London Ketogenic Meetup Group told me this trick. He uses bacon fat. How cool is that? So you want to strain it to get the bits out, but warm bacon fat when it's liquid is perfect. And then you add an egg or an egg yolk, and and as you lift that thing up, you know, put your splash of vinegar in there. Just there you go. Yeah, there are avocado mayonnaise is out there um uh mark sisson has a primal kitchen avocado mayonnaise i bought that uh, i didn't really like it all that much but if you if here's something about mayonnaise that looks healthy but really isn't if you or looks looks like it's healthier but if you you know hellman's olive oil mayonnaise for example the first ingredient is soybean oil so if you're trying to get away from soybean oil because of its inflammatory properties, you know, and I said, like I say, you can get there later. Don't worry about that now. But just check. Just check to make sure that it doesn't have any of that stuff in it. Like I said, I I ate mayonnaise for years. Well, I ate mayonnaise for all of that 80 pounds that I lost. And, and I had no problems with inflammation. Even now, I still have some mayonnaise once in a while, some Hellman's, and my C-reactive protein is under one, so I have, I don't have any inflammation problems. Uh, sucks if you're allergic to avocados, but uh, there you go. So the main idea here is, again, you want to get to fat adapted, and that means, okay, if you, if you f- fall off the wagon, let's face it, we're all human. Don't beat yourself up. Don't go off it. Just get right back on the horse the next day with bacon and eggs. Seriously, that's the story. You're you're not going to (laughs) die. You're not going to, uh, you know, it's not like, oh, screw it. I'm a carb eater. Forget it. This is too hard. That's probably the way you feel once after you have cheated. But just get right back on the horse. Eat something fatty as soon as possible. The next day, the next morning, make yourself bacon and eggs again. It's that easy. Just keep calm and keto on. Um, so, you know, that's it in a nutshell. You want to replace all the sugar and starch in your diet with healthy fats. I would say be aware that it's our tendency as human beings to try to outthink our bodies. And so... People want exact measurements and this and that and how much and how many grams and weigh everything and all that stuff. And that's fine if you're an OCD or CDO, which is OCD in alphabetical order. If you know, if, if you really need something to obsess about in order for you to stay motivated, I understand that. That's fine. But it's not necessary. Really, all you need to do is cut out the starch and sugar, eat when you're hungry, fatty cuts of meat, or if you're a vegetarian, avocados, coconut oil, that kind of thing. You can test different foods if you want, like cheese. Some people have a problem with cheese. I don't, but some people do. In other words, it raises blood glucose. It doesn't raise mine. Uh, you can test those things. You know, If you want to spend a couple of days just testing different foods, if you can tolerate that, that's fine. But just make sure that... Um, Just make sure you're smart about it. But really, all you need to do, replace all of the starch and sugar in your diet with healthy fats. Ah, okay. We need to talk about fats, don't we? 
what's a healthy fat, what's not. And I mentioned soybean oil. Um, if you go online and look for uh, composition of fats or composition of oils, you'll see that the vegetable oils, which aren't some of them aren't really from vegetables. They're from seeds and things that you wouldn't think have, like corn. Uh, did we know corn had oil in it? When I put corn in a pot of water, does there any oil come out? No. It's, it has to be processed and heated um, to ungodly degrees and temperatures, and everything in it gets ruined to get a little bit of oil out of it. So corn oil, canola oil, um, the vegetable oils, the seed oils, uh, some of the seed oils as well, um, just not not healthy and the reason why is because they're they're processed all right the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is another thing but the big problem is these oils are processed and they they wreak havoc with your system so the oils that you do want to use animal fats um, we've been eating animal fats as humans for a long 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 time beef tallow is perhaps the healthiest animal fat that you can cook with if you're going to deep fry anything tallow is your is your fat lard is second best and uh, olive oil is good coconut oil is good butter is good and believe it or not coconut oil and butter uh, are, are very similar in that they have these short chain fatty acids that can cross the blood brain barrier wait a minute am I saying that right Somebody might need to correct me on that. But uh, they can, they do not have to be processed uh, the, through, through the bile system or the liver or whatever. They can go directly into your system. I'm not getting that right. You know, I'm sorry. Don't, I, I, I can't remember exactly what that, what's great about those, but essentially, they are faster acting. Let's put it that way. Butter and coconut oil are faster acting, and uh, they they turn into into good things for your brain quickly. We'll have to ask Morris about the science. I c it's been a while. I can't remember that one. Um, so those are those are good fats, and those are things that you should be eating more of. The other thing is to not, what a lot of people, mistake people make when they start keto is they eat more protein than they do fat. And while this is okay in your transition period, because even eating lean proteins and less fat in your transition period is going to keep you hungrier, and it's also going to slow down the rate at which you get fat adapted, but it's comfortable. It's something that everybody knows. Excuse me. So at first, your first week or so, that's fine. Just, you know, eat what your body wants. But then slowly, you're probably going to be adding more fat, and you're probably going to be finding it more palatable after a week or so. So more butter, more bacon, more lard, you know, fattier cuts of meat like pork belly, for example. Yeah, pork rinds. This is great. Uh, and there's gr some great uh, comments here. You can buy manteca by the bucket in most Mexican grocers. That's right, Cindy. Um, if you're looking for lard, in in the like I say, in the first month or so, you can just buy the lard that comes in the, you know the solid white brick. But that's a hydrolyzed or hydrogenated lard. Hydrogenated, I think it is, and um, that's why it's so stable. Real lard is kind of soupy and goopy, and it's it's not completely hard. But you can buy that real lard in any Mexican grocery store because, you know, that cuisine is, uses lard to cook with all the time. Um, we have some great recipes, of course, for, for uh, I see the celeriac wedges and butter, coconut oil, cinnamon, cumin, and chili. Oh, my God, that sounds great. And pork rinds. I just made yesterday um, fried cod with breading made from pork rinds and Romano cheese. So I take a bag of pork rinds, three ounces or so, put that in a food processor with a few tablespoons or a couple tablespoons of Romano cheese. It's usually like a three to one ratio. So three parts pork rinds, one part Romano or Parmesan or whatever. 
and that turns into a breading. And so then I take a couple of eggs and I beat those up and I put that in one bowl and then I have a plate with my keto crumbs on it and some hot oil. In this case, I used peanut oil. Peanut oil has a very high smoking point and uh, it's great for frying. But you could use coconut oil, lard, anything. In fact, if you're using lard or tallow, that's even better. But um, yeah, turn that up on medium heat in a cast iron skillet, egg wash, breading, boom, in the pan. It's great. And I got to sneeze. Excuse me. I'll turn my mic off. You don't want to hear this. Everybody should have a mute switch on the floor. <laughs> Uh, Siobhan says, the pork rind and cheese breading mix changed my life. Yes. Yes. Uh, I've rendered my own lard before. Nice benefit of living in the middle of the country. It's not hard to buy a quarter or half of an animal from a local, f local farmer and get awesome meat and fat and bones. You are so correct. I mean, go to the grocery store and make friends with your butcher if you don't have a local farm. But if you do have a local farm, there's a lot of things that they just don't sell, you know, and it's usually the things that are best for us. Ah, the chicken. You know what I forgot to tell you about the chicken salad is that that pile of skin and bones right there. Well, you can get some sage and some rosemary and some garlic and some salt and maybe some cumin and and water and put that in a, a slow cooker or just in a pot on the stove and either put it in a you know pressure cooker into the pot for a couple hours or just slow cook it and, and simmer it down and strain it off and you've got bone broth put a little uh apple cider vinegar in there just a titch just a little bit and you've got uh bone broth and that is great uh just anytime as a you know i'm not really hungry but i wanted something to drink or something hot or some soup or whatever there you go stock you can also use it to cook with of course especially if you reduce it and add some bermonte that is the secret i think sauces french sauces in particular are really a secret weapon when cooking ketogenic and it's I'm not gonna say it's really simple but the idea is the same you want to take bones whatever kind of bones you have beef bones lamb bones any kind of bones and put them in the oven and roast them get them crisp get get them brown get that milliard reaction and then put them in a pot with some herbs and some garlic and some salt well, you might want to wait on the salt but but um, cover them with water and then just reduce it, reduce it, reduce it, reduce it, reduce it until you're left with about a quarter of the amount of water that you had before and strain that out. And now that is like a, a you know, if you want to put some wine in there to uh, deglaze the pan, great. But now you've got this base for a delicious sauce. Use some Bermonte, salt and pepper to taste. Some people use xanthan gum. I, I use xanthan gum to thicken. Xanthan gum is a um, powder, and it is a little finicky. Like the, It's very easy to over-thicken something if you've never used it before. Uh, I think it... I can't remember, but there's a ratio of how much you should use relative to cornstarch. I think it's like an eighth, but I'm not sure. But essentially, if you have, let's say a cup of stock, a cup of something you want to thicken, you only, you, first thing you want to do is take it off the heat and let it cool for a little bit because if it's too hot, it'll clump up. And I put my xanthan gum in a salt shaker or a spice shaker so it comes out in a mist. And just a, a few shakes, one, two, three, four, five, and stir that around. Actually, if you have a cup, you, you only need one shake or two shakes. You need to experiment with how much and stir that with a whisk and uh, bring it back up to, to boil, then it'll thicken up, and then you can turn it down again, and you've got a, a thickened sauce. Bernays, Bordelais, um, here's the key. It, you need to add more fat to just meat. I mean, just eating meat alone, if you're a meat eater, is probably not enough fat for you, even if it's a ribeye, right? 
So you need to make these fatty sauces, which just make everything more delicious. Uh, one thing I make is a hamburger sauce. Somebody asked for the recipe to this. And really, it's just, and, and I just fooled around with it. I didn't even measure it, but I have some mayonnaise, some sour cream, maybe equal parts mayonnaise and sour cream. Um, a little splash, maybe a tablespoon of sugar-free ketchup, which I found in the grocery store. It was pretty, pretty easy to find. Some Dijon mustard, some Worcestershire sauce, some garlic powder, some onion powder. Um, what else did I put in there? Uh, salt and pepper, of course, and just stir it up and it's great. <laughs> so anytime I have a burger... Even I poach my burgers in butter, put some bacon on it, slather that sauce on there. And get, guess what? After half of that, you know, you won't be able to finish it. You'll be like, oh, my God, I'm so full. Well, it's because of, of the fat. So when you add more fat than you think you want to your, to your dishes, especially when you're starting off, it's going to fill you up faster and you won't, you won't be hungry. Siobhan says, I eat meat with warm cream cheese, quick and simple fatty dipping sauce. Yeah, that's good. That is good. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and also lighter, delicate sauces too. Of course. Of course. Hollandaise. Hollandaise is wonderful. Bernays is great. Bordelais is kind of difficult to make because you kind of need veal. Excuse me, veal bones veal stock but you can use beef stock if you want to make a borderlays with just canned beef stock you can get away with that i mean you get the flavor of it but to do it right you need veal bones and also if your bones come with marrow in them and you want to make a sauce out of that it's a different kind of sauce it's a creamier marrow here sauce i don't i don't know what to say but it, it won't taste as meaty. It'll taste more like marrow and it'll be cloudy and thick. Um, so it's a, it's an, it's an acquired taste. I recommend you try it if you, if you're curious about it, but if you want to make a classic Bordelais or a classic, um, saw pan sauce, take the marrow out. Yep. You might want to make a pate with that or something. Um, liver turns out to be one of the most nutritious foods ever. So even uh, buying liverwurst, and I found this liverwurst called Braunschweiger. I think it's made by Jones. And Braunschweiger is liver with bacon, and so it's a, it's a bit more palatable. So, uh, you know, a piece of uh, a, a, a bagel from Fox Hill Kitchens, bread.2keto.com, with some mayo and some Braunschweiger on it and a slice of cheese. That's that's a good sandwich right there. Um, I just want to point out the URL at the bottom of the screen here, patreon.2keto.com. Richard Morris and I basically are striving to make this our job 24-7 to, to bring you all this information in podcasts and continue to do that. Uh, and so the only way we're going to be able to do that is by your support. We want to keep our shows ad-free. And uh, to do that, we would really, really appreciate uh, your help. So go to patreon.2keto.com. That's it for me. I wish you good luck in your ketogenic journey. Uh, go back and listen to this again if you need to hear it twice or three times. And uh, listen to those podcasts. And we'll see you out there on the forums and in Facebook groups and all of those places. And I'll see you tomorrow with another exciting live video. Bye-bye. Have a good day.